but Canada will be saved. I've seen it. Yeah. And some people say, well, I don't believe that. God says, it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I'm here to tell you that hasn't happened, but it will happen. Peter thought what was happening in the upper room was that. He said, this is what Joel told That was only the beginning of that. We get to write the last chapters of the book of Acts, and it's going to be greater than the first chapters. We get to be part of the greatest revival in the history of the world. Smith Wigglesworth, while he was preaching one day, closed his eyes and shouted, I see it, I see it. The greatest revival that has ever hit the world is coming. He said, there no disease will be able to stand. The healings will be so great. He said, there's so many people coming to Christ, nobody will be able to number them and he said I see entire hospitals being emptied and doctors running down the street yelling he said I see it I see it the greatest revival in the history of the world I believe we're going to see what a combination of the book of Acts and the Welsh revival of Sousa Street and all the other great moves of God put together something much greater than all of those put together he said I won't be here but it'll come it shall come to pass. You can sit and debate all day. You can say, I don't believe it. It doesn't matter. When God says it shall, it shall. And when God says I will, he will. And there's not enough demons in hell and not enough religious spirits in the world to stop it. The only choice you've got is are you gonna be part of it or not? Let me just kind of wrap up this part with this because I've heard this over and over again. Bill, maybe at some point this could have happened, but not now. It's too late. It's too late. Can you come with me for a minute to meet a man named Ezekiel and tell him you think this is too late? He would laugh at you. The most amazing, this is history, the most amazing story you read in scripture. God takes him up to hill and says, what do you see? I see valley of dead dry bones. God takes him for a walk. He says, come on down. And they walk through the valley. And Ezekiel says, not only were they dead, they were dried. Not only were they dry, they were parched. They've been the sun a long time. And then God asks him a question. Can these bones live again? Any normal person would say, no, of course they can't live. Look at them. They did live. They died. Now they're dead. Now they're dry and they're parched. But normal people don't change history. Normal people, I mean, Hebrews 11, not one normal one in them. Came in the service tonight, looked around, I thought, we're in the right place. <laughs> you really don't look normal. If you were normal, you really wouldn't be here. And you're so proud you're not normal. That's good, that's a, that's a good quality. And when God, you know, have you found this? When God asks a question, he's not looking for our wisdom. He knows, it's a setup. He knows the answer. Can these bones live again? The natural answer would be no, but he knew better than that. But he didn't say yes. This is, this is the best answer ever. Well, God, you know. He got away with that. That's the answer. You know, you know the answer. And then God said, I want you to do something. And this is where we come in. I want you to prophesy. I want you to prophesy to the bones. Are you kidding? I believe he closed his eyes. Sometimes when you're believing for the supernatural, you're believing for miracles, you have to close your eyes. Because if you, if you look at what you're prophesying about, it looks so just hopeless. I just spent part of a day yesterday with 
one of our grandchildren. And um, he's just making a great testimony right now. The other way to put that, he's really messed up. And I didn't preach at him, I just loved on him. I just kept holding him, hugging him and loving on him, tell him how amazing he is. And I looked at him and I said, you know, like he's got these channels, he does stuff and all this stuff, you know, and I said, you know, I'd, I've never watched one of them. I'm not a friend of yours on Facebook. People say, did you see? No. I said, all I do is close my eyes and pray for you. And he said, well, I don't believe in God. I said, and I don't believe you. <laughs> and he smiled. Because <laughs> when I close my eyes, I prophesy. And I see him, no, I, oh, not just making heaven. Oh, no, 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 no. Preaching the gospel on fire for God, healing the sick, raising the dead, doing more than I've ever done. He's going to do it. He doesn't have a chance. Prophesy to the bones. And he closes his eyes. He starts prophesying. And he hears a racket. And guess what? He opens his eyes and the dead, parched, dry bones are moving. And they're coming together. Bone upon bone. The foot bone connected to the ankle bone. Yeah. <laughs> ankle bone connected to the leg bone. Leg bone connected to the knee bone. You know that's a song? Yeah. You didn't, have you played that for Julia? Tonight. You're gonna play it tonight. Have a romantic night tonight. <laughs> he never heard it, we play it, you like it. It's a song. Now see, I was brought up um, well, I was christened Anglican, brought up United, then baptized in one of the Baptist church, and we were Baptists. But not like you. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of kinds of Baptists. There's as many kinds of Baptists as there are Pentecostals. That's a lot. But we were the dead kind. I, I didn't know what we were other than my mother, every time Jehovah's Witness or somebody came to the door, we're Baptists, we're staunch Baptists, and slammed the door, never came back. So we're staunch Baptists. And so I asked some people in my church, how do you know you're going to heaven? Because I thought that'd be good to know. They said, well, you can't know for sure, just work hard in the church, hope for the best. What great advice. So I started working hard in the church. I volunteered for everything. I, I was Sunday school teacher. I was just an early teen, Sunday school teacher, uh, um, uh, young people's president, um, board of junior deacons. I mean, I helped dig the hole for the sign outside the First Baptist Church in Brampton. I mean, I'd do anything. And still didn't know I was going to heaven. And one night, I happened to Kennedy Road Tabernacle in Brampton, which was a Pentecostal church. And I heard a message I'd never heard before. And I invited Jesus into my life. And I found out they were wrong. You can know. These things are written that you may know. You have, those that have the Son have life. Those that do not have the Son of God have, do not have life. So I started going up there. And I tell you, there were several things that attracted me to that church. One was there was this amazing, gorgeous, young girl who was the president of their young peoples, Gwen Rowe. I thought, I need to change that name. That's a boring name, Rowe. <laughs> and I was president of the Baptist young people's group, see. But, but so that was an attraction to that church. But there was life, the music. Like our music was funeral music. Like, see, I grew up before kids had rights. Okay, <laughs> so, so we're in church, Sunday morning, organ is, is playing the um, organ, I think it was doing off or something, and apparently, I didn't even know it, my foot started tapping. Yeah, in my mother hauled off and slapped me. I was getting emotional, you see. She said, stop it, you're in church. So I, I understood, you're not supposed to enjoy this, you're supposed to endure this. And the thing was, it was only one hour a week. 
If you told me then how many hours a week I was going to be spending in church, I would have thought that was a death sentence to not heaven, you know. And so I come to this church, and oh, the music. It was happy music. They were clapping, and they were... I mean, I could tap my feet, and nobody slapped me. It was really good. And then our pastor, Ron Stevens, would bring these southern gospel groups in. (sighs) I do, too. And uh, so (laughs) I bought all of their long-playing albums, 33 and a third albums, you know. And uh, I just just loved the music. It was amazing. And we had favorite groups. Well, one Saturday... I went to the Baptist church. We were having an event that night, a young people's group, and I was president, so I was going to get ready. Went to the church, nobody there. Put the record player on, and I put this record on by one of these Southern Gospel groups that I'd heard, and it was that song. Dem bones, dem bones, dem dry bones. (laughs) And so, of course, I cranked it up as loud as I could get, and somebody said, do you sing? Oh, I sang then. I sang that day. It was kind of the beginning and the ending of my career, but I sang that. And my thing is, if you can't sing good, sing loud. Yeah, come on, we've got some people here. We could have a something. And, and uh, so, I, and so we'd sing this. We connect all the bones. I hear the word of the Lord, and then when we got done, I'd take the needle and put it back, and we'd do it all over again. Keep connecting the dead, dry bones. And I don't know how long it has been going on, a long time. I was just oblivious. I'm just having myself a time, getting all set up. And through the side door comes this man, black suit, white shirt, dark tie. And he didn't look happy. And he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm singing about the bones. And he said, there's a funeral going on upstairs. (laughs) See, now here's the thing. When you receive Holy Spirit, which I had, and been baptized, you need to ask God for wisdom. I didn't do that. And uh, I mean, it's terrible, the picture. Like apparently, while I was down here having my self camp meeting, they arrived and they brought the, you know, the casket in and the family came in and the organist started. I mean, they were well. They're really good at funeral music because they played it every Sunday, so they just play it. <laughs> and, and and this family sitting there sobbing, and up through every vent in the floor <laughs> comes dim bones, dim bones, them dry bones. I hear the word of the Lord. It was um, it was one of the factors that made the decision that I would fit in much better at that other church. (laughs) And um, so I no longer had to lead the youth. I no longer had to teach Sunday school. I no longer had to be on the board of junior deacons. I got a whole new set of friends, (laughs) whole whole, whole new church. It was quite amazing. So I I remember that every time I think of Ezekiel. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> really bad. I feel I feel bad, but you know you can't make these stories up. I mean, it just <laughs> so so Ezekiel prophesies, and the bones come together, and then skin comes on the bones, and they stand up. And Ezekiel could have spent the rest of his life traveling around talking about this phenomenal miracle. I mean, dead, dry parch bones come together form skeletons, skin comes on them, and they stand up. And then you say, well, then what? Well, nothing. What do you mean nothing? Well, they were dead. But it was great. It was a miracle. It didn't end there. And I believe this is where we are today. God said you have to do something more. You have to prophesy to the wind. Now, this would preach. He looks up into what appears to be nothing. And he starts prophesying to the wind. The same wind that in Genesis chapter 1 
moved across the face of this earth that was without form, with void and no purpose and ugly and turned it into this. The same wind that blew through the upper room, not a gentle breeze, a rushing mighty wind. He said, prophesy to the wind. My friend, it's time that the Church of Canada start prophesying to Holy Spirit again. Not only will we sing here, welcome here, we desperately need him. This is not a time to be seeker sensitive. This is a time to be Holy Ghost Pentecostal people with all that goes along with it. I mean, that's what's going to change this nation. It's time somebody stood up, started prophesying, Holy Spirit, blow across this earth. If God could do what he did in Genesis, if he could do what he did with the wind in the book of Acts, then he can do it here in Canada. But somebody has to prophesy again and call Holy Spirit to blow through this valley of dead, dry bones. And they started breathing and they started marching. And God said, if I can do this, think what I can do for Israel. And I say, if he could do that for Israel, think what he can do for Canada. We need an outpouring of the Spirit of God. When the enemy comes in as a flood, that's when Holy Spirit will come and raise up a standard. This is his hour. And we need people who will fall in love with the third person of the Trinity again. We need people who will fall in love with precious Holy Spirit. We've been the silent majority too long. I'm gonna rise up. Isaiah 60 has to be has to be the scripture for us. Arise. We sang it. We stand on guard. Church, it's time for us to arise and shine for our light or our fire has come. Listen to this. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. People are going to see God's glory. It's going to be on us. We're going to be carriers of this glory. We've got to carry the glory of God. We're so concerned about people carrying this virus or that virus. I'm telling you, anointing is stronger than any virus, and we need carriers to carry the fire of God, the anointing of God, that everywhere you go, there'll be an outbreak of revival and fire of God. And listen, this is a description. Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and it is, and deep darkness on the people. And that describes today. But then there's that little word, but. That changes everything. The Lord will arise over you. His glory will be seen on you. And the ungodly, the unsaved will come to your light. If it's dark, it's our fault. We're the light. If it's unsavory, and it is, it's our fault. We're the salt. We were in one area... And one pastor said, oh, brother, you don't know how dry it is here. I said, it's so easy to start a fire when it's dry. One spark, and you can have an explosion. Folks, it's time. It's time. God doesn't need a huge group. He just, this many people, ignited by the fire of God, this many people, Getting what they had in the upper room can change a city, a province, a nation, and a world. You see, we say, well, you know, look at what they're doing in Ottawa. Did you see what they're doing in Jerusalem in the book of Acts? Probably the most ungodly, anti-Christian government you could get. They were regularly arresting the preachers and beating them and forbidding them ever to talk about Jesus. And these guys were so obsessed. They refused to be distracted. They never criticized the government. They never criticized the leaders, the religious leaders. They just got out and they went back doing what they were doing. They're so obsessed that everybody needed Jesus. We need some people that get obsessed about him again, that believe that everybody needs Jesus, that everybody needs Jesus. The only way to get to heaven is Jesus. We need people who actually believe that and believe that without Christ, people are going to a lost and dark eternity. We need that today. If we're going to do what they did in the book of Acts, 
We're going to have to have what they had. We're going to have to have what they have. Would you stand with me today, please? I want you to slip your hands up for a minute. This is your time of receiving right now. This is your time of receiving. Pray in the Holy Ghost for a minute tonight. We prophesy to the wind today to blow across our lives, to blow across our hearts. We prophesy to the wind. We prophesy, God, send your fire once again. Burn out everything in our lives that shouldn't be there. Shiko Ramaka Shako Bababa Sikabarabakusi Ikabarabaku Shaka Bababasa. There's healing in the house tonight. Well, I've been speaking, he's been walking up and down, touching, ministering, healing. Spirit of God saying those with chronic conditions came with them, but they're gonna leave without them. That which the doctor said you'll always have or get worse. They're going to be proven wrong tonight because Jesus is in the house. And chronic conditions are going. Disease is going. Pain is going. Limitations going in Jesus' name. There's several things I want to do tonight. So... In order that everybody's ministered to, let's lay hands on ourselves. Take your hand and place in the area of your body where you need healing. If you need healing all over your body, put your hand on top of your head. Wherever you put your hand, leave it there. There's a nail scarred hand on top of your hand. It's okay. He wants to touch you wants to heal you tonight. The fire of God is actually burning out. There's somebody with some kind of bone disease. God's healing tonight. You feel something happening in the bones. A pinched nerve is being healed right now as I speak towards the back of the auditorium. God's healing you. Somebody's knee is being healed. You will not require surgery. God's healing that knee right now. You just start checking it. My, that neck and shoulders being healed. You had an accident and injured the neck and shoulders. You've, you've had problems and limitations for years, but tonight God's healing that neck and the shoulders. Start moving it in Jesus' name. Arthritis is being healed. Arthritis is going back to hell tonight. Start moving those hands. Start moving those fingers. Move that leg and lift it up in Jesus' name. Somebody's foot is being healed. Someone else with a, a problem inside the mouth is being healed. There is such a healing anointing in this house. I believe everyone in this place can be healed tonight. There's cancer being healed tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I come into agreement for every one of you here believing for somebody that's COVID that is not here. Maybe they're in the hospital. Maybe they're at home. His name is above the name of COVID. So in Jesus' name, I agree with you for your friend, for your family member that healing shall flow right now. We take the limits off of God. I take, in Jesus' name, pain is going. Disease is going. That blood condition is being healed. That problem across the top of the head causing problems. God's healing you right now. So many are feeling, feeling this in Jesus' name. Thank you, thank you. It's like a cloud settling down. It's like raining, healing in this place. There's healing rain. We just receive, this is your time of receiving right now. Father, thank you from the front to the back, one side to the other, that not one person will miss it. We ask you right now that every person will receive. You promised us that the day will come when we'll see every person in the place totally healed. May this be the night. And we promise you no one would attempt to share any of the praise of the glory. This is yours. This is your night. This is your place. This is your people. The honor and the glory and the praise, it's all yours. Ah, somebody with a breathing condition, breathe in. Ah, somebody, you, you have not been able to breathe that deep for years. 
No sign of asthma, no sign of bronchitis, no sign of tightness. That heart condition is being healed. It's like a tight band has been released in Jesus' name. Right now, I want you to check whatever you came with. If it's possible, check, move, move, do what you couldn't do in Jesus' name. God's been healing people all over this place. Now, let me just explain something. We never get concerned if it's not all gone. You know, some people say, well, something started to happen, but you know, I've still got this and this. God doesn't start things. He doesn't intend to finish. So whether I said anything about the condition you have, whether you felt anything or not, I'm just going to ask you to check it one more time. We're going to give praise to God. If you know that something seems to be beginning to happen in your body tonight, I want you to wave your hands right now. Look at, look at, look at, look at. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Father God. Father God. Uh, I'd love to have testimonies, but I don't think we can. Hmm? You don't know. No. No, that's fine. Just back here, shout out what, what's happening to you. And what's happening tonight? After years. Somebody else back over here. Yeah. Yes. Where was the arthritis? Stop down now. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Somebody else. Move your neck right now. Did you know you're going to get healed tonight? You did. How, how did you know that? You came. Where are you from? This church. Good church. Yeah. Good, good church. Um, this is amazing. Somebody else. Yes. You see what I'm saying? He's not really good at social distancing. Because you don't need me to lay hands on you. He's just, he's just doing this. No oil, no hands. He's just healing people. Somebody else over here. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. That's good, Jason. That's good. <laughs> Two more people. Yes. The cameraman up here. Tell me again. <laughs> How long have you had breathing problems? Take a deep breath. There's something. He went, Jesus went right up in the balcony. <laughs> <laughs> one, one another person this is good who else yes what is it I knew somebody's being healed in the mouth how does it feel now isn't that better than a trip to the dentist I mean yes. <laughs> I want you to promise every one of you, because some of you, a lot of you raised your hands, but some of you didn't because you're not sure. You'll figure it out on the way home. You'll figure it out during the night. Whenever you do, give God praise. Yes. Give God praise because he's worthy of it. He's a healer. Yes. I noticed somebody on Facebook put a comment on one of our posts, said, Bill Prankard healed me in the meeting. I think it was Alberta, and he didn't even know. <laughs> and Meg, my mother, daughter, said, Bill Prankard can't heal anybody. <laughs> Jesus healed you. <laughs> I would have said that, but she just got it right in and said it because that's, that's the truth. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to do a couple of things tonight. And we're not really going to 
you know, finish this meeting tonight. We're going to continue on tomorrow morning. Now, if you have commitments tomorrow morning, cancel them. Now, if you have to work tomorrow, you're not allowed to phone in sick to come to a healing school. <laughs> so my recommendation is just to tell them you feel too good to go to work <laughs> and see how that goes. Or just let them know you'll be a little late. You'll be in this afternoon. Do whatever. But it's, um, it, I've been amazed at the response in the morning meetings. And uh, people that are hungry will come and, and we're going to equip you. Tonight we're going to pray for the fire of God. But before we do that, I want you to make a decree. And I want every person in this place to say it with some passion. Canada shall be saved. Come on. Canada shall be saved. Now, that was just nice. Wouldn't really make a mosquito nervous, but it was nice. Would you, could you say it as if you really believed it? Canada shall be saved. Okay, now here, here's where it gets serious. The devil thought he'd had this country because the Christians were giving up. They were tired. They were focusing on the rubbish. And so the devil's already been celebrating. We thwarted the plan of God. So I want us to say this a few times with such passion and such volume that it echoes to the corridors of hell so every demon in hell knows there's a people in Peterborough tonight that will not give up, that will not quit, that will continue to believe that Canada shall be saved and the devil is lost. I think that's a good idea. Come on. Canada shall be saved. Canada shall be saved. Canada shall be saved. Yes! Now, I want to, you to slip your hands up. I'm going to pray the fire of God to come upon you. And then we're going to sing the national anthem one more time. Father God, these hands that are uplifted, we ask you to anoint so they become lethal weapons that everywhere they go, everything they touch will be blessed and healed. We ask, oh God, that their mouths will speak words of life and deliverance. As Christians have been speaking curses over our nation and curses over our leaders, we stop it now and we speak life and we speak blessing over them in Jesus' name that our words out of our mouth will be life and deliverance and we will prophesy to the dead dry bones to rise again and become a great army. I pray God you'll take these feet so that people will go exactly where they're supposed to go, when they're supposed to go and I pray God these hearts heart will pant after you and these ears will hear your voice louder than anybody else. I pray for fresh fire to come upon you now from head to toe. Every fiber of your being be filled with the fire of God right now in Jesus name. Come on, receive his fire. You're not taking it just for yourself. You're taking it for them right now. But every fiber of your being will be on fire for him. I claim it. I claim it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Just before we sing the national anthem, we sang it earlier, but we can sing it different now. I just want to share this one more thing. I've been very concerned with how many Christians have been speaking about our nation about our political leaders, about our spiritual leaders, and speaking curses. We've got to stop it. We've got to stop it. We have no mandate to do that. This isn't about politics. 
I don't like the restrictions. And I think it's really tough for our premiers and our federal leaders to try to navigate this. And I know there's agendas and all that. And I'm here to tell you, I've had the opportunity to talk to our present prime minister on a few occasions. And first of all, I never talked to him about politics because we would disagree on just about everything. But I will not speak curses over him. I pray for him every day. When I talk to him, I talk about his family and talk about his kids, talk about his wife, talk about his marriage. And I will speak blessing over them. This has nothing to do with politics. I know God loves him. I know God loves every politician. God loves every leader. And he wants them to be saved. And they don't get saved by Christians cursing and speaking terrible things. We need to start speaking life. And Canada needs and God needs some Christians who would just stop it. And if people try to pull you in in a conversation, you say, I don't talk that way. I just, I just want to bless. I just want to bless. If there's issues, God can deal with it. If there's things that are wrong, God can deal with it. That's not our place. So will you commit that we're going to be people who bless? Because you reap what you sow, you know. You reap what you sow. You speak words. I'm going to come back. So let's try to be careful what we sow and what we speak. It's time for life. It's time for blessing. Because God hasn't given up, and we won't either. Before we speak the final blessing, let's show that video one more time. And when we come, say, God, keep this land glorious and free. Sing it with anointing. Sing it with passion. Sing it from your heart. This is a prayer. Amen.